a lot of narcissists, they, they're after the next shiny object, okay? And um, a lot of times it's not going to work out and it's not necessarily because they picked someone bad, even though it's funny how, how oftentimes that happens. Um, no, th remember, they're the ones that screw it up. They're the ones that couldn't keep it in their pants. They're the ones that accidentally tripped, fell, and landed on a stick. <laughs>
And then the short-lived relationships that come after the long one that they had with that old supply. Because there's always going to be one, so it's going to be one person that they were in, in it with for a long time. And even if they were full, full-blown narcissists or not, yeah, they're not going to forget. They're not going to forget. So I tell you guys, don't mess around with the married, the married ones, especially when they're still married and they're telling you that they're going to get a divorce. Especially you ladies, you, you, you believe that. Until you see the divorce paper, until you see that divorce paper, you do not go on a single date. You do not get your hopes up. You do not chat. You do, you do not text. Okay, it's like, oh, you're, you're, you're married or you're separate, whatever. Oh, okay, then that's cool. Not, you're not the one for me. Good luck out there. You know, if you guys ever, if you have that divorce ever happens, you still have my number. I'm going to say what's up. See where I'm at at the time. You can do that. Otherwise, it's like, nope. You have to be able to throw the fish back into the sea, guys. You have to be able to recognize what your non-negotiables are. You have to recognize what's not going to work out for you. That's the problem. That a lot of us didn't know who we were. We didn't, we didn't know what our non-negotiables were, what our morals were, our values. So we meet people and we, we, we realize right then and there, oh, this is not a good fit. Oh, but they're hot. Oh, okay, we're just going to have sex for, for a little bit. Let's just see where this goes. Oh, it's not going to work out anyway, so I'm just going to ride along until I meet someone else. And then you catch feelings. Uh-uh. Once you've been through a, a narcissistic, abusive relationship, and you're getting back out there, you have to be able to throw the fish back in the sea and realize, oh, no, this is not, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh, they, 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 they pull out that cigarette, that cancer stick. It's like, mm, it's not, no, that's it. That, that's it. That's not happening. That's not happening. Do not get into that situation thinking that you're going to change them because it's not going to happen. You're not going to change anybody. You can only change yourself. Having said that, yeah, they remember narcissists, even though they have a, a, a fragile ego, they do like to protect that ego. And if they know that rejection awaits them, you're not going to hear from them. Even if they owe you an apology, you're not going to hear from them. Even if they recognize that they were wrong, which let's face it, they, they're incapable of ever being wrong, much less recognizing that they were wrong, you're not going to hear from them. A lot of them are too embarrassed. A lot of people, I mean, think about it. Think, think of it if you screwed up a relationship really bad. Let's say that you were the one that stepped out on the marriage. Okay? And, um, or you stepped out on the relationship or whatever. Whole thing came to a chaotic, abrupt end, and you just walked away, disappeared. And then your conscience comes back when the grass isn't always greener, and you want to reach out to this person to make amends. That, you know, it, it takes a strong character. It takes a lot of humility to seek out that person and apologize in detail, face to face, and risk the embarrassment and the onslaught that you just might receive, that's well-deserved, let me tell you. That's well-deserved. Are you going to put yourself in that situation? I remember a long time ago in my early journey, one of the things I needed to do was make amends to a lot of people that I had hurt. Yeah, 12-step work, right? And I found people, oh my God. I remember I reached out to a dude that I had broken his nose, you know, back in school. And I made amends to him. And it's like, that, that was, it, it, you know what? If I'm being honest, it was very liberating. It's like I freed myself. I freed myself from something that, that my ego was holding on to. And I was like, nah, I, I hurt this man. I hurt this man. And I need to own up to what I did. And I felt good. And he appreciated it, you know. But I was also ready. 
I was ready to hear some nasty shit back. And I, I can't blame them. When an apology is real, you do not follow the apology with, with a but. Like, I did this, but it's because you did that. I did this, but it's because of this. No, no, you did this. And you had no right in doing it. And you knew better. And you still did it. And when karma comes for you, that's on you. You cannot put a but after that apology. You cannot put a but and somehow accuse the person you're apologizing to of their wrongdoings. That is not a sincere apology. And let's face it, narcissists cannot apologize. My psychopath ex never apologized for anything she did. When I realized, I was like, man, this, this chick just never says sorry for anything. Like she would find, she would say something else. She, like, she would put up this wall and, and it, it was such a miserable vibe that she would put out when she would screw something up. Like never would she just own it and actually tell me, damn, oh, I'm sorry about that. I fucked up. <laughs> See, I didn't know what narcissism, psychopathy, antisocial personality disorders were at the time. I was like, why can't you just apologize? Like, all my life, people do me wrong and they apologize. Hey, no problem, we squash it. What was it with this one person? Why, why couldn't they do it? And then I realized why. And I realized why. I learned. I learned why. And I bet you she ever did, she was going to throw it right back at me. So, you know, do not be surprised if you, if you don't get a Hoover. If you're psychopath, you narcissist, X, cheating, lying X. If they never Hoover you, if you never hear from them again, if years go by and they never reach out to make amends for what they did, do not hold your breath. Do not be sad about it. Rejoice. Whatever they have to say is bullshit anyway. Remember what they did. Remember what they did time and time again. And then again, and then some. Remember how much they hurt you. Remember how it felt. When they wouldn't take your call. Remember how it felt when they would ignore your text. Remember how it felt when you knew they were cheating on you. Remember when you, you knew that they were most likely cheating on you with the very same person that they told you that they had cut off. Remember how that felt. Don't you forget that. Don't you forget that. Why are you craving a Hoover from your lying, cheating, narcissistic ex? Why do you want it so bad? You just might get it. And you just might believe the BS you just might find yourself right back in that quagmire. Then you're going to kick yourself in the ass. Because you should have known better. Damn right you should have known better. They did the same thing. That's what they do. They did it to you not once, not twice, but countless of times. Why is it going to be different this time? I don't know. That's not... Time. Time. Don't try to convince me otherwise, it's not going to happen. I listen to you guys. Look at the track record. Look at the history. Yeah, if you don't get a hoop, it doesn't necessarily mean that your life is great. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're happy about you. Maybe they are. Who cares? That's nothing to do with you. They're out of your life. They ruined, or they tried to ruin your life, so rejoice that they're not in your life anymore. But maybe the reason you're not getting a Uber is because they know they fucked up. And they know that you're stronger now. They know that now you know. 
And they know that you've moved on to bigger and better things. They can risk that fragile little ego, ego thing, and status. Mm -hmm. And today it's all about the narcissist. All about them and how they feel. And no They never did. They did. They wouldn't have done what they did. They wouldn't have watched you suffer. They wouldn't have watched you fall apart. Compromise your boundaries and your self-worth. Try to make that relationship work. Try to forgive them. Try to give them another chance. They would just stick it to you again. And they would stick it to you and they would be smiling and laughing and having the time of their life behind your back with the other people. Loving every minute. Not giving you second thought. You didn't exist to them. Remember that? You didn't exist to them? Now, you don't Found off in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen. This is Psychopath Exposure. You got some value from this video? Drop a like on the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now. And again, leave your questions and your thoughts in the comments below. And it's Kita. I will see you guys in the next video. Be good, stay strong. Okay.